thank you all of you for joining me and i was looking forward to this session uh, uh, i was telling you rajesh sir last evening i am coming to chennai after 25 years okay so when i finished my graduation way back in the 1990s then i was working in chennai for some time six months of uh, work and um, i was staying in this uh, place called triple cane okay i used the bus go to office a short stint and uh, uh, two three words i learned back then one was vanakkam i learned okay so vanakkam to all of you i also learned the word, word sapad okay and tanni so any any confusion i had i would ask them tanni kunduva and they would get something for me okay and i also learned the importance of water management in chennai because never before i had seen uh, water in packets when okay, water bottle itself was a big thing in 80s and 90s uh, we didn't know water had to be rationed like that you know, we grew up with lot of water wasting water for that matter okay when there's no jug we would take the entire bucket and put on ourselves when i come to chennai i realized water is so so important so scarce and then when i was preparing i Uh, read about uh, water harvesting uh, and where chennai coimbatore were okay the leaders in that so a lot of things changed for me when i came here and happy to be back amongst all of you so thank you for coming in and for those who are initiated uh, my name is shabir i happen to be a geography teacher i started my career with Uh, geography gs geography optional then essays so now i'm all over the place okay as teachers i think our problem is we love speaking uh, they they ask me why are you a teacher uh, what is the inspiration i said no inspiration to begin with uh, earlier it was i had to do something in my life as you know like it what happens after 4 uh, 5 years of uh, upsc preparation uh, suddenly you realize that uh, you can do nothing else Uh, all the things we have learned where does it go and so started there and then i realized i love talking i love talking and nothing better than making people sit and listen to me okay so that's where it started off but i hope i have done some justice to my calling so thanks again and i'm very happy to be here amongst all of you for a lot of reasons one is of course uh, the curiosity part because i have not taught anywhere outside delhi um, i was called to some places but nowhere else so when i had a chance to come here i said okay that's interesting well let me see okay and and my class um, i used to have lot of students from tamil nadu from chennai uh, okay so we would converse whatever way we could converse in the class a lot of students have qualified it was a good opportunity for me and second reason of course is i think Uh, you all are very blessed with an institute like shankar ias because when i was teaching in other institute of course now i have my own small humble center uh, trying to do a bit of my own but i was part of uh, i think very fortunate there was part of this institute called vajiram and ravi i was a teacher there for almost 21 years um, um, yes um, maybe i'm a slightly bit older than i look like okay so so Uh, when i was there i used to hear about mr shankar uh, in geography he was very inspirational um, we had some common people who knew him and i used to hear he is doing a great work down south so when there were plans to open a branch in uh, outside delhi so our institute thought let's go to chennai so at that time a lot of people scared me go to chennai you have got a formidable competition with mr shankar so my my regards to him Uh, may his soul rest in peace uh, you know the character of institute is known by the teachers and the founders who started okay and uh, equally inspiring is the fact that madam who is now managing uh, i think she's a great inspiration leader for all of you how single handedly she has managed is expanded and i'm i'm amazed by the infrastructure here uh, suddenly you realize the world is much much bigger than that a small area in delhi called as old rajendra nagar i call that as i slums okay pathetic living conditions there so you have such a good infrastructure 
So all that reason, that's why I'm here. And uh, my uh, regards to uh, Mr. Shankar, I said that inspiring in many ways. So you all are blessed in that ways. And a small introduction about me. Uh, so I started off with my uh, journey on my own with a friend of mine. Uh, he is Mr. Dev Tripathi and we uh, have been classmates back in college days. Um, so he was working with Accenture as an MD and I had a bit of idea about the education line and we got together. So otherwise I have got no formal qualification to teach geography. That's one reason why I'm always on the defensive. Um, I'm otherwise an engineer, unfortunately. Okay, like many of us, we get into it because uh, we think that's a great thing to do and I'm no regrets there. I did it. Then I realized that I don't think I have an engineering brain also for that matter. In engineering and thank God I didn't make any buildings. Okay, I was with this in this company, ECC. ECC is headquarters in Chennai, right? That's where I was working, LNT ECC for some time. So me and Babe got together and I learned geography. Uh, mostly as a teacher. So my students have been uh, uh, victims of my mistakes. So I would uh, be asked questions. I would know answers. I would wait for one more day, go back home, learn and come back and tell them. That's how I learned my uh, geography. Uh, so that's me and Dave together here. So let's start off now. I think it's a bit late. Uh, we started off for uh, reasons to accommodate all of you. So here we go. Okay. So. The principal aim of today's discussion is geography optional. How do you prepare for it? What's the strategy? And I address some of your queries, whatever you have in mind. Uh, before I continue, uh, how much time do I have with all of you? Uh, can I uh, go for about one, one and a half hours or you are in a hurry? Online students also, they can respond. Uh, because see, I said, no, I love talking. So if you're willing to listen to me, I'll keep on talking for eternity. Okay, so if you are in a hurry or something, let me know. Okay, and if you have to leave, you can leave, no problem. Okay, uh, but leave when I'm looking that side. Okay, and I will not to be uh, hurt. Okay, it always hurts when somebody walks out. But then, fine, it's okay. All of us make our choices. Oh, we have a comment there. I can't re uh, read that comment. It's fine. Okay, I, I have a good eyes. It's just that key. Okay, it's too small for my eyes. <laughs> so... Okay, fine, we'll start off now. The strategy for geography. I think this is one of uh, the most important first step. Uh, choosing optionals in many ways is almost make or break of your career in UPSC. Uh, I've seen a lot of bright guys, a lot of bright students. Because of wrong choice of optionals, because optional is 500 marks. That's a lot of marks. And optional, irrespective of what you think, requires about seven, eight months. Uh, part coaching, part self-study. There are new books to be read. Uh, GS is the leveling ground. Everybody is same, okay, more or less. But you come from different backgrounds. Some science, some from humanities. Uh, some have done job and they come back. So optional, I think, is a very, very big challenge. And you must make this choice very, very diligently. And uh, I can say that because myself, when I started my preparation way back in 90s, I'm sure some of you were not born at that time. Okay. So, so back then, I also flirted with four or five optionals. Uh, I think I started with mathematics because of my engineering background. Uh, then I realized mathematics of UPSC is very different from what I thought mathematics was. Okay. So I left mathematics. Uh, then I took up physics. I had a love for physics. In fact, uh, if it was not for UPSC and engineering that I took up, I was uh, more inclined towards physics. I did one year of graduation for, for physics. Then uh, I qualified the examination and did engineering. So physics was my love. And uh, I took up physics. But then I realized that love is different and practical is different. Okay, You, do, you should not always marry the person you love. Okay, That's a different challenge altogether. So I realized not physics. And I studied almost six months, two, three months of uh, mathematics I had done, two, three months of physics I had done. Then I took up public administration because I thought I'm an officer. I better know administration. Okay. Um, I 
killed myself over it. Uh, did whatever I could have, but nothing got into my head. Okay, I again spent three, four months on that. Then somebody told me sociology. My cousin, she qualified into service. She had sociology. There, so she said Shabhi takes sociology. I studied sociology. Uh, thankfully, for only two, three weeks. Okay, then I said I had no idea what to do. Uh, and then my mother told me one fine evening, hey, Shabir, why don't you try it? Because she was seeing almost six months or seven months of uh, juggling, struggling, nothing was happening. I'm studying and I have no clue what to do. Then she told me, why don't you take geography? I said, ah, this is an opportunity. Why? Because my mother told me and I will take the subject, but doesn't have penalty is because of you. Okay. So it was a very convenient way. You know, we always spark our failures on somebody. So I said, okay, I have got my inspiration now and I took geography. When people ask me, why did you take geography? It was my mother who did it and I thank her now that I think she saw something about me. I don't know why she said geography. I It clicked with me. I didn't qualify. That's a different thing but I think I love the subject eventually. So my uh, suggestion to all of you is take your time. Uh, don't jump into because in this hurry of uh, taking a subject and finishing it off, if you make a mistake and you end up in a wrong subject, then you are trapped. And this examination doesn't give you too many chances again to come back and start again. Okay? So optionals. Now, one suggestion to all of you here. I have a small exercise for all of you. Okay? So if you can take out your phone, online also can take out your phone. I have a QR code. Uh, I do a bit of a survey. I'll show you the results of this also. Uh, which whenever I have workshops on this, uh, I tell my students if they can answer some questions. So online, offline, uh, if you can scan this QR code, uh, there are three, four questions, very simple questions. Uh, yeah, see if you can answer those questions and uh, then I'll get back to you and I'll discuss what I intend out, there, out of that. Is it scannable from a distance? Yeah, some of you can scan from behind maybe. If not, we could help some of you maybe if you want us to carry your phone there. Are online students managing? They're managing? Okay. There are four or five questions and we're surprised about the results you will get. Okay, I can move from here. This is more clear maybe. You could try the screen behind you. Maybe it's closer there, if that works. Last uh, couple of years, I've been trying this data-driven decisions. How to choose what they do. And I'll share some amazing insights that we have from people who have qualified. You've done it? You, you couldn't scan this? It's okay, you can use my phone for scanning. Anybody needs my phone? You need my phone? Yeah. Thanks. And how will you, where is your phone? Uh, then how can you, uh, then you'll get my data. You'll not get your data. That's okay, no problem. If you cannot, you can, no, no problem. Anybody else needs?
all done fine so while your data coded uh, i'll show you what results we have okay uh, these are the six broad criteria okay we listed down ease of study it looks easy to study uh, resource availability the books the material uh, support systems teachers coaching institutes okay some support systems in terms of maybe reading okay uh, booklets interest and comfort okay you have an interest in subject gs overlap okay and finally the cost of course always matters okay which and india is a, a price sensitive uh, society okay so cost matters and i'm sure that's a valid point now uh, this is what we found okay and it's surprising my the, the criteria for selection optionals 73% till of course you guys have got got added they said it is ease of study and length of syllabus okay uh, have you studied the gs syllabus was the difference between knowing the syllabus and studying it when i say study it's about uh, mapping what questions are asked from what area asked probably almost by hearting syllabus i was surprised in the ecosystem even teachers can't recall syllabus uh, i was surprised in gs in particular the vast students can tell us you know syllabus of geography in gs okay they said something i said no tell me exactly how it's worded and the reason why it's worded like that because if your syllabus is not understood then you're all over the place again i found most of them okay uh, 57 said no maybe and those who said yes also had doubt if they like to study its syllabus you must ask yourself if you have done it or not okay how many toppers have you talked to what to see in this ecosystem there is no dearth of advisors i'm sure some of you have become advisors of your juniors also okay i mean it's a very uh, in thing uh, one guy who comes one month before in the cycle he becomes advisors for somebody else so there's no dirt advisors and with the youtube boom and internet boom everybody is a great scholar in upsc preparation okay my my experience tells me the people who should tell you about subject is essentially the people who have qualified i mean it's worth it because it's an examination where you spend almost 3 4 5 years of your life if you call all generations following your life will change your life changing the 100% but the generations that follow the entire society you live in they all get changed so in this kind of a high stake examination i encourage to go and talk to people who have qualified do what it takes like if if i am uh, starting institute i would should talk to people who have been successful in the institute running if i am going to become engineer i better talk to some guys who have become engineer but i found okay 78% said they talked to one or two guys and most of them said they had no access to talking to uh, the toppers who qualified and of course this one which subject has best overlap more 60% almost geography has a great overlap i do not know what you have answered though we will add that in our uh, data eventually so this tells me three things number one when you make a choice on optional or study method most of us do not have a structured approach uh, we go by here say you talk some this guy that guy we have a gut feeling and this one ease of study and length of syllabus should not be the criteria when you enter examination of this level my it, it's a high stake examination and i i'm sure uh, you know the fact the exam is very tough i mean if anybody says it's easy okay he does not know the examination or is lying through his teeth okay um 6 100 150 200 qualify in the proper ias okay and results 900 results to say it's easy it's impossible so your mind should to start a type of required but if you are 
I think we have got the whole process wrong here itself. In this preparation, there cannot be anything called as ease of study. You have to get out of your comfort zones. You have to be highly inconvenienced. So people come and tell me, sir, it is a difficult, it is unnerving, it is fit. Okay, this examination has no compulsion to make you comfortable. And uh, if you qualify, your life becomes all the more uncomfortable for that matter. So ease of study cannot be the idea at all. Length of syllabus is a misnomer. Because if the syllabus is not defined well, it will be a short syllabus. If defined, I'll tell you how. Are asked beyond the syllabus. Syllabus you should know. But don't choose by small or short syllabus. And I have course, there are some who do interest. A good number of them have said interest also. But this is the, how students make choices. Okay, so that is where I begin my conversation here. So, if you look at this list, sorry, if I uh, look at this list, uh, my approach will be, uh, you should first start with your GS syllabus study. And go do go. What are the subjects? How many questions asked? The environment is a very powerful area of your syllabus. Very important. How many questions asked? Uh, uh, in fact, which question number is possible, you can tell me. Uh, you, you see, there are three guides in your preparation. One is your syllabus. Second is your previous year's questions. And third will be your teacher. Nobody else. So when I say study syllabus and the people, is also and you make a notes what did you understand trends you make your jottings uh, what makes sense to you and if i do that i find these are the seven core areas of a syllabus leave ethics and you find uh, geography has an overlap with these four areas geography directly with paper one you have got uh, overlap in ir you cannot do ir without geographical knowledge about where what lies the entire geopolitics, okay. All you cannot talk about earthquakes or cyclones. You cannot talk about heat waves or tsunamis for that matter, landslides or forest fires. Okay, that's geography. And of course, we have a huge amount of geography in the development economy part. Construction, roads, exports, imports, and so on. And that's the reason why uh, students tell us the whole person, perhaps in more in some ways. Okay, that was uh, pitching uh, the importance of geography. Uh, by the way, uh, I know some of you have chosen otherwise. That's perfectly fine. I can only speak as a geography teacher. Okay, so take it with that sense. Okay, I'm not to say that other subjects don't matter. They do matter. And that's your comfort level. But those who are on the fence, you can't decide on which optional. Uh, you, those who are unsure about, should you go for geography or not, I'm pitching it for them. So, and that's the reason why uh, most of environment teachers are teachers. I also, uh, in the GS, back in my institute, I'm the uh, teacher for environment. I also teach IR and I also te teach topics of development economics. Okay, we have a test series running. I handle that. We have some questions I need to answer online. Okay, fine. Take it. So that's about this overlap thing. Now, uh, imagine whatever uh, age you are in. God willing, if you guys qualify within I'm sure all of you are here for IAS, IPS, IFS, maybe IRS. So looking for that type of a job, more or less. Okay. So you students, you qualify. Okay, within two years, you are heading a districts, or at least you are part of that board of decision making. So what we expect, what studying sincerely is. 
you have to be thinking students you are not a school child okay blindly doing what is told to him good or bad as thinking students or aspirants who have that level of responsibility i think you should sit down and analyze the performance of students across okay and i'm helping you on that you can take off from, from there on these are some of the names i hope you all can see the names and online also you can see this name i just took up some sample look at uh, and i have tracked how my data last 10 15 years ka data mere i have the data i'm focusing on last 5 years look at the first 7 8 5 10 ranks uh, shruti agarwal uh, 2020 subham kumar uh, 2019 pradeep singh and look at the subjects history psir sociology geography psir sociology psir economics anthropology sociology philosophy economics physics sociology civil so engineering and geography okay law mathematics is now added here look at this one here mathematics number 1 anthropology geography sociology law okay uh, geography mathematics again law and if you see this if you see the trends across uh, look at the again subjects so fundamentally it is four five subjects that actually matter and they give you results if you take the list, this year's list was even incredible where people from sanskrit uh, from very regional languages uh, law economics physics all type of even chemistry medical science also. I don't know, look at uh, Telugu literature um, in this. Uh, uh, no, 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 this one. This was in top ten on uh, medical science also. And look at the marks. Okay, two eighty. Uh, this is an unusual low mark, two fifty-eight. Uh, this guy must have been tremendous in GS and maybe interview. Otherwise, look at the marks. Uh, 320, 284, uh, 283, 290, uh, 367, 335, and n marks are four subjects. Okay, if I... not this one, look at this one. The marks that uh, people have got in geography. These have been my students also. Uh, in uh, 16 362 okay this was uh, uh, lakshmi among the highest marks in optionals anthropology philosophy so my what i'm trying to show you is three things well mainly from four five optionals among the top ones all subjects give you results the people qualifying from law sanskrit economics is a very technical subject physics also people qualify from all optionals one number two those who qualify they get the marks required and those who qualify they touch and cross 280 to 90 300 so if looking at a cohort okay uh, there is a cohort of people who qualified there is a huge difference of marks now you tell me when you go out and ask students okay how much marks are you getting uh, what is your uh, uh, comfort level who will you meet more will you meet the guys who have qualified more or guys not qualified more who will you meet more okay not they are gone correct you can't access them so if you have to judge the process of preparation the subject of preparation Okay, who should you actually be asking? People who are qualified. Unfortunately, you don't ask them, either because you do not know how to ask them or reach them. But if you are a capable person to qualify, you will get marks. In at same note, same approach. One guy gets three hundred nineteen, two hundred ninety, and. i think as human nature very few of us have the 
to blame it on the, the subject, uh, blame it on the system, blame it on UPSC, on the teacher, on the course. If I'm looking at, okay, is it possible to score? Absolutely. And this is not just geography, okay? It is for all subjects. But if only one person is qualifying, there are up. So, so it's like, do subjects give you marks? Yes, they do. But is it easy to qualify? I say no. So this data, and I can go on from this. If most of you from, uh, you know, uh, science background, I'm assuming, okay? Some of you, I'm sure, engineering background also. You can appreciate numbers better. Now look at this number. Uh, from subjects, how many people appear the subject? Look at this. Geography, people 94 applicants, 97,000 applicants. Sociology, 50,000, 68,000, 44,000, 64,000. What this basically means is if more people are appearing, then more likely you will meet did they can't hear me? Uh, I can hear you, but the voice is breaking. Just keep How it we do? on this side. Yes. Okay. Will this work? Yeah, online. Uh, uh, I think you could not hear me well. Is it okay now? Can you confirm? Maybe the transmitter is nearer now. In, in between. Okay. Intermittently. Okay. Fine. I am continuing. You let me know if you still have a problem. So come back here. So what other students appear or one thing will not vary much. For other students, if 10 qualify, for 500, it will not become it will not become into five. 10, maybe 11 or 12. If there are uh, 10 people appearing, maybe two people will qualify. If the 10 people qualifying, the range somehow, that's what is called a scaling. UPSC tries maintaining that balance. Same issue? What do you want me to do? Just uh, hold on the class for two minutes. Please. Okay, fine. No problem. I can hold on. Okay, fine. You can, you can do that, yes. So I'm slow, I think there's so some problem in the audio. Okay, they'll rectify it. I could even hold the mic if you want me to. We're back on the uh, streaming. So the objective of saying this to all of you is that for examination, which is as, as intense as it is, as demanding as it is, if you start the journey with too much of doubt and tentativeness, it will destroy energy. It's like every person has a fixed amount of energy. That energy can either be used for doing a productive work or the energy is used for all type of negative thinking. End of the day, it's the same energy. So when I'm saying this, I essentially want you to appreciate three, four things. One, one do a judicious selection of a subject optional after studying every trend. And then once you jump into it, then don't question too much. You must have the faith ki, okay, fine, let's start off. Because for every subject, there will be people who will not qualify. And for every subject, there will be people who will qualify. There are people who will not get marks and there will be people who will get very high marks. Okay. Uh, last year, the overall marks in the examination has been subdued. If you heard about a CSAT paper, this examination, subdued, okay, right? A lot of people are agitated. But the fact is, okay, there are people who have qualified, no? So, whatever be the standard that they ask you questions, if you studied well, you will qualify. The problem is, when you are the lower rung in terms of your aptitude, if you are that, this will be a victim of chance. 
So get out of that. All the data is essential because of that. That if you are focusing on the subject, the method of preparation, you have studied the syllabus well, and give it all that you can have given. I don't think trends really matter. Okay. Those who ask me, sir, uh, should I pick up some background trend? I said, no, don't. The main criteria should be your interest and the support that you can get. That's why all of the data to tell you how many students are appearing and how many qualify, what subjects do well, what marks are they getting. In fact, uh, uh, these uh, uh, have been, uh, I mean, these are the marks of uh, geography of students. Ashwarya and uh, Yasharth, uh, Naman Goel, Anjali Shrotia, Sonali Dev, they all have been my student at some time of the preparation. Okay, uh, Pratham uh, was my student, Junaid was part of my uh, test series, um, Anjali has been through, through, through with me for a long, long time. She, she took almost three attempts, but then she made it. And last year, and these are the names, Ira Singhal, of course, I was not her teacher. Others in South, I was linked, Ajay Singh. Uh, Ajay Jain, rank 12. Uh, the point of conversation, and this year, uh, we have uh, uh, this girl Prekta, uh, we have Nitin, and Shubham. Shubham was an incredible example of uh, preparation approach. He is a first-time guy, first-time, and he prepared during the COVID online, okay, and he cleared it, and he got the highest marks, almost uh, 300, 299 he had got. Okay, Shubham, this boy. Uh, um, uh, Preksha took three attempts, but she also got around 280 odd marks. He has got the point here is students do qualify, all type of students are there. You choose according to what you think is interest for you, and why interest is so important because they go while you are preparing for qualifying in the first attempt. How many of you? Would want that? Raise your hand. How many of you would want to qualify in the first attempt? Yes? And that's nice. You should aspire for that. But the reality is, be ready for second, third attempt. Okay. And second, third attempts means you must read the same subject at least 15, 20 times. And you cannot read the same subject if you don't have interest in it. Simple logic. If I give You'll go to sleep. So forget about easy paper or not easy paper. Uh, forget about whether it is uh, convenient or not. One very important criteria is convenience. So, so convenience in terms of comfort level, whether you can identify over yourself with your, yourself or not. And that's where I see a lot of engineering students or science students have a natural okay, affinity towards geography. Why? Because it has a semi-science okay, base. Around 10 15 percent plus the huge overlap that we have with GS. So, I hope I have uh, given you a method how to evaluate your subject. Uh, don't take a decision right now, take your own sweet time, go back and study. You want some data, I can supply it to you, okay? But choose it according to your okay, analysis, uh, not because he told me, or she told me, or sir told me, not because I'm inspired by somebody's success. No. It has to be your choice, your method, okay? your conscious decision, then it will work for you. If you take a subject and keep on debating, uh, getting swayed by other opinions, it will only spoil you know, nothing else. Okay? So that's where I uh, set this uh, part of the conversation. Okay? So this is the uh, you know, takeaway for you. Have faith in yourself. Okay? It is not the subject. It is you. Your interest and your efforts. Because there are people qualifying with Sanskrit also, right? People qualified with law. People qualify with physics. Okay. If you ask a physics guy, how is physics? What will he tell you? Oh, excellent. I love physics. If you go and talk to a guy who's qualified with Sanskrit, what he will tell you? They have wonderful subjects, Sanskrit. It's so, it's so scientific and uh, so wonderful and legacy history. You come to me, I can talk only about geography, right? You go to a Pabad teacher, it is about Pabad. So, if you ask people according to what their interest is, that is not the way you choose a subject. 
Okay, so don't get swayed by what we tell you. Take information from us. You can ask me, you tell us about geography, I'll tell you five, six, ten things. Then you must talk to somebody else who can tell you about sociology, maybe. Uh, talk to somebody else, uh, talk about Pabad, maybe, and then you make a choice. But remember this. It is not the subject. Every subject can get marks. Like it's about you, your efforts, and your interests. And there's a scientific way. So I tell my students, take inputs about geography from me. What to decide its geography, then jump in, then I'll help you. But I can't help you in any other subject, right? That's for your, you to choose, elect, and move on finally. Okay, so this part of conversation done. Okay, now let me uh, take up a book. Okay, uh, and discuss geography as a subject. Okay, so geography is essentially uh, uh, these uh, broad seven areas. Okay, some of you I have chosen, some of you will choose. Broadly, this is a, the scope of geography. Physical geography, it's all about nature. Environment geography, ecosystem, environment, biodiversity, soils, forests. Economic geography. All development angles, uh, population, settlements, urban, rural. There's a philosophical area called a geographical thought, political geography, and regional planning. Planning is a very important part of geography because ultimately planning is what? Where the resources, industries, how can the infrastructure, problems of urban areas, rural area, combine them together you get planning. So one of the core themes of geography is planning. Planning for rural development, hill area development, planning against disaster issues, uh, planning for security, planning for agriculture, uh, planning for infrastructure, planning for geopolitics. There's a big area. Planning is very, very applied in nature. That's why I said uh, geography has an overlap with economy and development. I mean, if as a teacher, if I was not teaching geography, I would be teaching economy. Because of uh, 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 industry is ignored for any planning. And that's part of geography. Okay, so this is the scope of geography. Now, uh, if you look at those who qualify and those who don't, okay, again, uh, if these are the aspirants, very few are the topics. Typical gap we have. There's a huge crowd at the bottom run. Okay. And some of them escape and they become toppers. Okay. So I'm discussing now why this gap. And I'm talking from the perspective of geography plus uh, see if you can appreciate this in terms of a GS also in some ways. Okay. So again, we had surveys on this. Okay. I do this in my workshops. Why the gap? The common answers are, sir, I have not read the books. Uh, I lack motivation. Uh, I have not done PYQ practice. PYQ is previous questions. Uh, answer writing is an issue for me. Uh, consistency problem. I, I get demotivated, not regular. I started late. I didn't have time. Okay. Very common reason for many of them. This is in general. Okay. And... Uh, I suggest do keep track of this and ask yourself what you will tell when asked, okay, eventually. But I see something else here. Like this is what uh, I'm told. But I want you to appreciate this aspect of preparation. See, and I have been in industry for almost 21 years of teaching and my own preparation for four or five years. So that's go to 25, 26 years in UPSC career. That's quarter of a century. A long time, I believe. In this entire span, what I noticed is questions have changed. The syllabus has changed. The type of reading material required has changed. The explosion of issues around us. Awareness has shot through the roof. in terms of time, has not changed. Back then, when I was studying, then also, GS was, okay, one year approximately, now also one year. 
Back then, geography used to take about three and a half, four months. Now it takes maybe five months. Okay. The course in terms of the time has not changed. And then also the classes were two, two and a half hours on average every day. The same thing you guys are doing more or less. The problem is the teaching pedagogy, the approach, the teaching methods, the teaching, uh, you can scope. Well, that has not changed. The questions have changed dramatically. Uh, uh, think of a question like this. Okay, One question is, and I'm giving a general question. I'm assuming you all know this. Okay, What are the prospects of solar energy in India? Discuss its pros and cons. Another question. Discuss solar energy as a game changer in India's energy security and of major support for small marginal farmers. I hope you get the question all of you. One question is, what is solar energy? Prospects and pros and cons. Uh, how is it, uh, you know, uh, helping us, how not helping us? Okay. And the second one is, I'm asked something else. I've asked you about, tell me how is it a game changer in terms of in India's energy security? And then I'm asking you, tell us if this can be a major support for small marginal farmers and how. You can realize the difference of the content here required? Typically in class, a teacher teaching and even you studying, if I ask you, tell me five things I teach in solar energy. Most of you will tell me, tell us what is solar energy? What are the technology? What are the prospects? What are problems? What are solutions? Most will say, sir, you want to teach structure. And we teach that. But the questions have gone to next level. Okay. So, while I cannot afford not to teach the base content, but the base content is not enough anymore. Yesterday, I took a class. Okay, I'll show you some questions on, on those. Uh, the question was on, uh, give us your opinion on, is India doing enough to manage energy-based energy geopolitical challenges okay, for India's economic growth? Is India doing enough to manage Energy-based geopolitical okay, issue challenges for India's economic growth. You realize where the question level is? I'm asking your opinion. What is India doing? A, B, C, D. Tell us, is that helping India in terms of energy geopolitics? I'm not even asking you in terms of energy security. But when I'm in the class teaching you guys, I will teach you from where India gets oil, gas, what are the problems, what we have done recently, and that's all. But this question is at a different level. So you must appreciate that in your preparation, now at least, last three, four years, your preparation has to go through some stages. Like, you know, crawl, walk, and run, and fly, your stages here. Earlier, the base content used to be enough. The base content taught in 8, 9, 10 months was enough. The questions have dramatically after 2017, 18. And the change had started from 2014 onwards. So, so I'm talking about, okay, the questions I... Level 1 question, which is straight from syllabus. What is energy security? What are the sources of Indian energy? Component of thermal energy, fossil fuel, renewable energy, straight from syllabus. Your notes will have it, your books will have it, and syllabus is mentioned. Level three questions are beyond syllabus. This too, I have to know. You cannot escape the fact. But the questions are beyond syllabus and require your opinion, your thinking. You have to talk about what is your understanding of the issue. Like say, 
uh, I can see this question as a possibility. Criminality and morality, they are not coterminous in terms of their relevance. Discuss. You understand the question? Criminality and morality okay, are not coterminous. Means there are some acts which are which are criminal acts. Just what do you think in terms of what is immoral? Can we say that criminal? Yes or no? Immoral according to our society is maybe living relationship is immoral. Immoral. Okay. Maybe not helping somebody when he asks for your help. But can I say that this criminal also? This was a statement in, in the context of this lady who had uh, uh, painted some nude photographs with her daughter. Okay, big news, I think it was a Karnataka issue. And she was hounded for that. The court says that what you may consider as immoral is not necessarily criminal. Like say in our culture, you know, lesbian rights or homosexuality is immoral, correct? Can that be criminal or not? Okay. You got the question now? Now tell me, in a foundation class, can we teach this to you? In the basic class, I'm teaching you Indian society. I'm teaching you constitution. I'm teaching you probably recent amendments. This discussion is not taught to you, right? And this discussion, I cannot teach you at the first level. Remember that. You'll run away from the class. So accept the fact the questions are changing now. There are tell in the next level, level of discussions. Like say, Chandrayaan project, tell us the advantage, disadvantage, whatever you can tell us. But if I ask you your opinion, do you think developing countries like India should be in missions? Okay. What is your opinion? That's an L3 question. Your opinion is required now. And I'll, I'll, because this topic is in news, so maybe some of you have read this. Otherwise, for many questions, you have no, no clue on this. So know that I'm going back here. There's something called as core foundation understanding and something called as advanced understanding. I hope I have given a difference here. Okay. So the three and L2 is like a transition question. Okay. Uh, not straight, but it is uh, not as tricky either. From syllabus, but not as tricky. This is a classic difference I have made when I'm teaching my topics. So what happens here is, I'm giving examples from, uh, by the way, how many of you have taken geography already? Can you raise your hand? Some of you, you know the syllabus more or less, right? Like online, I believe some of you may have seen syllabus. Look at the questions asked. Explain how. Now, all of you know the topic called tell morphology and geomorphology. And uh, um, people are teaching that. Look at the question asked last year. Explain how various aspects of tell morphology are used in transportation, a settlement, land use planning. I'm telling you, this is a question which you cannot move one line on this question. While I know flood management, while I know transportation, I know settlement problems, and write this in 15 marks. 15 marks means not more than two pages. The topic is an applied topic, next level topic, which we cannot teach you when we are focusing on course completion. Look at this question. Discuss. And all of us know this word. Discuss role of slope, altitude and relief in landscape development. We know landscape models. We know the role of some factors. But linking these three things, it's impossible you have studied this in the class. Impossible. Even I would not have taught you. But you're... Look at this question. Okay. Um, now this one. The concept of tectonics has been derived from isostasy, condylar drift, and explain the examples. I mean, I have not seen a single teacher, student tell us 
Okay, drift they can handle. I saw to see what's the link. You have got no clue here. And they're not even from regular books. What do you have to attempt this? And all of this, okay, last two, three years. Mein. This is a question, next level question again. Stream basins and drainage area. Watershed area. Watershed is a paper two topic for planning. And discuss something on those lines. And this is, I can tell geography why this is my domain. This is a trend for every subject. I've done this mapping for GS also, for option also. I've done this for, you're all seen SAS paper, right? SAS paper, you open up, you don't even know it is what topic. They all, we know it's a philosophical topic, but how to start, where to end? Essentially, UPSC has elevated the entire examination level. Okay. This is not meant for those weak, with weak heart, not meant for those who, who want comfort studies, not meant for those who are not willing to think at all. Okay, and I'm sure, you know, see, in Hindi I say this, there's one category of students called as part chor. Part chor, basically part is study, chor is chor, as in thief. People who run away from studying, in Hindi we call them as part chor. In UPSC, I say, one more category they have discovered. Likhit Chor, who rescue from writing. Okay. They will do anything but not write at all. So they will listen. YouTube. So, so I have listened to that YouTube. I understand everything. I said, Likhe dikhao. Write and show. They can't add one sentence. I'm sure all of us are part of that team. Including teachers. We also hate writing. And with that. I'm just demonstrating what I mean by L3 level question. Okay? And this is not just geography, remember this. It's true for SS paper, it's true for ethics paper. And you've seen uh, this year CSAT paper. Okay? And I do not think UPSC will come down in terms of level. Why? Because, you know, what they've done, my daughter is in class uh, 9th, 10th, and I was seeing her, uh, I, I try teaching her whenever I can. I was seeing some questions on English language and history. The questions on language were compared to authors and their work, okay, as in the subject. One author is a poet. He had written some uh, po poem. Other guy is a short story writer. And the question examination was compare contrast styles for a class 9 student. Class 10th, NC. Yeah, that one of the greatest innovations of modern society is the concept of nation states. And in India, the nation state development took a lot of time, the roots of which is in India's national struggle. In UPC, they can ask, we can give the statement and ask to comment on this. And they have asked questions in school at that level. If I ask you, tell me what is nation state? And tell us, how nation state is the biggest innovation of our political system. How and why? And, uh, and that chapter tells us, Gandhiji's biggest contribution was that he contributed to the building of India's nation state. Comment on this. Understand level of question asked there? You think it is UPSC high level. The school level has gone through the roof. Last year's, we are analyzing the CDS paper and the NDA paper. Even the questions there have become elevated, which means I doubt if the UPSC level will come down anymore. They are elevating it. Accept the fact. That's why I tell the students, you guys are fighting for a CSAT tough, CSAT tough, said nothing doing. UPSC will not listen to you. UPSC is not employment generation program. Remember that. It's not your adhikar. Your But your right is not to qualify. UPS is not there to absorb you because you are unemployed. They want bright, smart guys to run the country. And if I am there as the government, I will want the same thing. You can't qualify out, go out. So they are elevating the standards and across subjects. I don't think it will become any easier. This is for you to understand first. So the questions will be thinking level questions. Okay, questions. 
and we did analysis we have done in geography particular i have done this because that's what i'm discussing now in the last 2 3 years l2 l3 questions are almost 70 80% of your syllabus questions you can do the same thing for gs also if i was here for gs workshop i would have done that with you guys sit down and ask yourself which are the l3 questions you'll be surprised how many l3 questions they're asking you now and like i hope i have set that benchmark for all of you see as a teacher i can do two things one is i can play this down and i'll tell it'll happen don't worry keep it i'll keep you i'll give you a zone of comfort the second is as a teacher i'll start by saying hey, don't take it lightly this is the standard we demand out of you let's see how we can do it so i, we, I as a teacher does not want to downplay this level because if you downplay it you will get surprised after 6 7 8 1 uh, um, um, one year or 6 uh, 7 months i want awareness to be there and unfortunate that many of you have not even seen or studied this like this you will ask me you know so what's the difference between a regional center and centers in delhi i think this is one of the differences but i i, I can see uh, shankar ias has taken care of some of these l3 level questions also so x asked okay that's the analysis here so i propose the preparation should be two stage preparation one stage prepare one stage is what i call as the foundation level foundation level is essentially syllabus completion the basic books the basic notes you know the constitution you know india's history you know the economy you know all the concepts around social issues you understand india's art culture that is your foundation a lot of foundation is definitely inspired from your school studies that's why we keep telling you read ncert read ncert that's a strong foundation the foundation in gs can take you approximately okay 10 11 months in geography it takes about 5 and a half 6 months foundation content but the foundation content will not help you qualify when i compare i think by the way how many of you are from engineering background raise your hand so almost half of the class here and online i'm sure or at least you know about this okay now look at look at the analogy here think of iit entrance examination and the class 12 syllabus you will find there's no difference the topics of class 12 are examination which I'll ask you now. If you are topper of class twelfth, you have studied all topics very well. Can you qualify IIT? You cannot. Same topics, but the treatment of IIT is much much higher. The same is your foundation and your next level. The foundation is like your class twelfth course. You have to read that, master it, but that will not help you qualify. In geography optional, okay. I say there is there is the foundation class. Typically, I take six months to cover. Not good or bad. That's just the teachers who do that in four months also, five months also. But uh, I have my limitations. Uh, I was taking the course for four months. Over time, it has increased. Okay, so for me, it's going to be six months, in which approximate division is. Physical geography, 75 days. Environment geography, 10 days. Economic geography, 15 days. It's almost mapped. Approximately 80 days. Uh, plus or minus some days, depending on and maybe I had a vacation or uh, some holidays. But that's time we take. And over 50 days, where physical geography, 15 days. Environment geography, 5 days. So again, I have mapped it. In this advanced course, we teach you the next level questions along with answer writing, along with, okay, you know, um, your practice revisions and all of that. The series also is part of this one. The one thing I want to differentiate again, they go, while all of us know answer writing is important, I'm sure all of us know this, 
all of us know that we have to give tests. But then the mistake that we do is we assume that tests that we give during the foundation course is the test that you need. The answer is no. Because, see, if I ask a question like this, cell morphology, how is it uh, important for transportation, settlement, or flood planning, uh, important for water issues? This one question has six themes that they are covering. You can't answer the question. And most questions are interdisciplinary. When I'm teaching John for resources, it is part of a disaster management. It's part of your geopolitical aspects also. So until I've done all the topics, your answer will not be a good answer. So you Then I can leave the topic to transfer. When you are giving tests, while the course is going on, those tests are essentially progress tests. What I mean by that is, I'm testing what I taught you did you understand or not. I'm teaching like you keeping pace with me or not. But that is not exam level test. The one I say is your progress test. Another is your exam readiness test. The way it's into two very different things. A history question. How do cultures or temples are mirrors to Indian society? Is the question asked uh, okay, last year. You can't. You know, Indian social issues also. Plus, you have a good idea about the locations where what temples are, what to where stupas are. What are forms? You can't ask the question at all. Energy security, geopolitics. You can't answer this till you have done energy security and you have done IR plus whatever India is doing in terms of current affairs. So just differentiate this. So lot of tests you give while you are doing the foundation, they are not exam tests. They are your progress tests. Actual test starts when you are starting off with your advanced course. And this applies to both. It applies to your optional and even your GS. Okay. So that's how I differentiate the two stage of preparation. Am I audible online? Is it okay? Is it fine all of you here? Okay. So this was the foundation course and this is the advanced course. Right? Okay. Now this is a very important thing and I hope you can transfer this to your GS preparation also. This is the three levels of questions. Level one are information-based question. What type of questions? What is this? What are cyclones? What has India done for tsunami management? What are India's challenges? What are technology problems in solar energy? The what type of questions? L1 questions, state from syllabus. L3 questions are your opinion questions, your analysis questions. Well, these questions are based on what you have read. This is based on what you think. It's a personality thing. Okay, if you ask me, one thing the UPSC is testing is your personality, nothing else. Your in terms of your commitment for development, your ability to interlink things, your percent in terms of your strategic planning, your critical thinking skills. Because if UPSC was testing your knowledge alone, they would have gone to the best college of India and taken the toppers from there, no? Go to Loyola College, the top 10 ranks. Make them IAS. Go to Presidency College, the top, top 10 ranks. Go to IIT's top 10 ranks. None. Why are they putting you through the process? 
writing, analysis, and why essay, think of essays. So whatever uh, personality tests they could not do, they say now take up essays. And essays are topics you could not have anticipated. The topics you could not have prepared for at all. So they are saying now write spontaneously. Let's see how you mind things. Because if I give a topic to you and you know they can ask you, you'll get prepared for it. No, simple thing. Essays are designed to surprise you. And now give me your write-up on this. And they're doing this in GS papers also by asking surprise questions now. Uh, link, tectonics and isostasy. I mean, it's impossible to think about the question. Let's see what you do. You might, you might give me a poor answer, but if it's logical, I'll take it. Let's see what you think about it. You need depth there. Okay. So L3 question, I say, is your personality thing. Okay. So when you're preparing for the examination, you have developed that development sensitivity. Uh, I mean, I, I wish I had more time. I would have taken up an article in current affairs and I've discussed with you how an article should be read. Okay. What to pick up from the article, not simply mining facts. Mining facts is what your YouTube channel guys are doing. What content you are getting is doing. But thinking on the questions is this level of preparation. At least be aware of this. How to do it? I mean, uh, God willing, if I get a chance and the systems allow us, we can think about it. Okay, but be aware okay, that this is what they are doing. So, the typical approach we generally have is you prepare from base towards top. My approach is you must do this, but also start developing like this. This is what we call a strategic approach. Okay, I give a content, you memorize and you write down. This is an analytical approach, the why approach, the vision approach. I'm trying to establish the fact why you have to go beyond the foundation course. And this applies, as said, for everything that you're doing. Your GS work, your optional work, whatever setting you are doing, the beginnings can be level one answers, level two answers. You ultimately must graduate towards this. Okay, that's the approach I would recommend. Okay, now I have found an uh, acronym for this. Okay, uh, it's entirely my indigenous creation. Okay, I call this as the UVA approach. Uh, UVA is in, U is understand the topic. Uh, v, uh, UVA, v is the vision, the vision of India's development, the vision of what is uh, liberty, the vision of what's democracy. And A is the approach, the applied aspect. Okay, what can you do about it? And you as in, I mean, your personality. If this idea gets ingrained in you, that UPSC preparation is not syllabus completion, that's the easiest thing you can do. UPSC preparation is not current affairs coverage. It is not simply newspaper reading. It is something much more where you must elevate your personality itself. And I'm telling you, 100%, I've interviewed so many of them and many of them, uh, touch wood, have been part of my classes. Those who qualify, they are a very, very different personality. Very different from the regular students who otherwise have some other type of issues. So be aware of this thing. Yes, initially, your focus has to be course completion. Uh, do the notes diligently. Uh, memorize the facts wherever you can. Okay, yeah, You have to read the basic books. That is the base content. On that, you develop a personality. That's why I always say this. The preparation actually is very easy preparation. You know why? Because most people are not able to transit on this side. Most of you get trapped at the base level itself. If you know some small tricks, how to elevate yourself, the game is over. Others can't keep match. So the examination looks very tough in some ways. Okay. But if you know that nuance, the technique, how to elevate ourselves to the next level, it's a very easy examination. It's difficult not to get a rank if you are aware of that next level. Okay, so anyways, I have found an acronym that works for me. Okay, and I am focusing on this aspect. 
तो योर एडवांस कोर्स गेट्स इनटू दिस वन योर एनरिचमेंट कंटेंट इज अबाउट दिस विजन अप्रोच वेर यू अप्लाइंग वॉट एवर यू हैव रेड ओके सेड दिस नाउ दिस आई थिंक इज वॉट एवर आई टोल्ड यू टिल नाउ दैट्स पार्ट ऑफ appreciating examination in terms of what's required now this i think is a very important part of setting a process right okay so i'll share something you decide whether it works for you or not now this is i think i hope you all can read this can you now i'll read out if you have uh, because i know it's uh, a bit too small for most of us okay so you uh a timeline in terms of months the years 24 uh, 25 and this is what you should do and i'm talking about geography for now because that's my mandate okay um, some other session maybe gs so you are now here geography foundation 6 months will take me 6 months from august up to january end okay or maybe early feb 6 months this is not enough there is a part called as geography advanced course okay and if you are giving a prelims the time between prelims and the mains you know how many how many days is that anybody knows how many days come on you should be knowing your fingertips so approximately yeah 90 odd days if generous maybe 100 but 90 approximately uh, uh may end examination uh, june Uh, july august and mid september is examination okay effectively it's less than 90 days because after giving a prelims you all will go through at least 20 days of trauma uh, whether qualified not qualified according to shankar ias answers according to xyz answers i'm there i'm not there one month less one you are always bargaining there you will you will definitely waste 25 days there and examination 10 days before that you all go will go, will go crazy you not know what to do like if you are really a good student and working hard you you will go absolutely nuts so i say your effective days are essentially month of july and august because june you will spend debating like whether you have qualified or not if not qualified you will have another one month of mourning and if unfortunately you but it's because you have lost one month now the so effectively have month of july month of august so if i look at actual study days it's just about 70 odd days in 70 odd days can you learn answer writing in 70 days can you learn answer writing can you learn essays writing can you finish the higher level content you cannot do that right acha that's one question second question i'm asking all of you is before prelims how much time should devote only for prelims any ideas four months three months five months somebody said how much time do you need for prelims exclusive preparation three months four months so if is the month of may is the examination at least march onwards do i will say start from feb itself feb march april or whatever may you have right so if you must start prelims preparation from feb onwards and after prelims you have uh, 70 days for mains readiness by when should you finish your mains preparation got the logic all of you here you cannot afford to leave the mains preparation for after prelims after prelims is ha memorize revision memorize give test memorize that's all so if you are giving your prelims in the month of may 24 by when should your course get over jan latest correct all of you and which course foundation or advanced course advanced course not foundation you have this like on first of feb give your mains okay i am on my mains you may you require that level of proficiency if you delay this even if you clear the prelims what will do with it that's the common question 
if you clear the prelims and you are not mains ready, it's waste, right? And it's, I say, it's a criminal waste because prelims clearing itself is a huge task, no? You spend months together, some of you years together, practicing and praying and qualifying. And when qualifying, what a sheer waste. So if you're giving up prelims, the approach has to be, I'll give the prelims when I'm mains ready. Not that I'll think about mains when prelims are over. You don't have time for it. If you start now, foundation is done, advance is done. Okay. And you've got Feb, March, April, what I call as prelims program. Whatever we are doing. Give means revision program. Okay. Means revision, whatever you couldn't know to do, do it now. appreciate it at all. Your timeline is very, very important. It's like, you know, I am in the, what, I'm not, uh, what, So your method depends on you knowing your timeline properly. Okay. So just have some jottings on this. Okay. I just put that month. And now it's August 23. You must finish off your May's readiness, not later by January. Okay. Then get into your prelims study, what I call as a prelims program, whatever it is. And then, of course, you can get into your interview preparation. That's the cycle that you need. If your main course is going on up till March, April, that year's attempt is over. You have no chance. And when I say main study, I mean both. Like I mean foundation and I mean advanced. And so writing tests proper and advanced concepts of healthy level. Is it okay, all of you? My intention, not what I'm doing here with your mind. My intention is not to scare you or confuse you. My intention is to tell you what the reality should be. Then you go back and plan what is to be done. How you will manage, how many hours you will study, what course will you join, follows after that. Okay? So if you are doing a GS also, same approach. You must finish GS by Jan. I think you guys are having five hours of class, most of you. It's required. You have got no other way out there. And do it that way. Fine. Can I move on from here now? So you wrote it down, okay? I may I'll give you the PPT if you want. You can take it from there also. That is my recommendation that we have. Now, uh, given the cohort that you are, I do not know what is your level of study. You probably are two types of students. One is uh, those who are preparing for 24 and those preparing for 25. And uh, please, there's a saying, where there is a will, there is a way. But I'm not a believer of that beyond a point. When we say these quotations and unnecessarily burden ourselves. 
is like I am standing on the balcony of 10th floor where the building is away and I want to fly. Again, I am flapping my hands and I believe if there is a building, is away, I flap and I jump out of the window. What will happen? Okay, I will fly, fly in the next birth itself. I hope that you are born a bird. So, where the builder is away is a nice idea, but also be pragmatic there. Don't get into a pressure unnecessarily. So, if you think you can do this, go for it, but not a blind idea. If you think I must wait and do this, then do it. It has to be your conscious choice. As institutes, we are not supporting. But what works best for you, think on that. Talk to your teachers, talk to your mentors, and make a wise decision. Okay? Any, nevertheless, I said, there are two of you who are there. 24 attempts and 25 attempts. Now, my recommendation is this. If you are a 24 attempt student, and you are starting, okay, you are optional now, or maybe it began a month ago. Then you have no time for the advanced course. What you should do is do the foundation course in January. Parallelly, you are doing GS course. You are doing according to doing. From January, shut geography. You are prelims mode. And after prelims, you join the main support program, which will be a very fast program. Okay, to finish and. Get ready for the main examination in geography. It will be tough, but you have got no other option. I will not recommend that you join foundation and advance together right now. Because the timings are different. And you end up having two classes here, and you are doing two classes in the GS. That's a crazy planning. If you ask me, you should not be doing more than two classes a day. Remaining time must go back and read, revise books, memorize, make your notes. Okay, so if you join geography with GS and you're planning for 24 examination, then please don't join advanced course in geography. GS, your student will help you what to do. Okay, for geography, do geography foundation. Okay, give your prelims examination, then this two, two and a half months, we'll do what's best possible. But then give an examination like you want clearly. In UPSC, I don't believe in trial attempts. It's absolutely nonsense. No trial required. You want trial? Take the paper and solve it on your own, no? Because no matter how bad a preparation, if you give the examination, there will be an expectation there. And no matter what, if you don't clear, you feel very bad about it. And as the attempts increase, you always will have a guilt. Oh my God, I wasted that time. So don't give any trial attempts, please. Give the prelims like you want to qualify. Like I'm jumping out of a building. Clear the gap and land on the other side. It can't be a trial jump. What's the point here? Because the examination is not that level. I am a artist. I am swinging between ropes. I can't have a trial jump there. Trial jump, do at another level. Okay. But in the performance, you must jump to clear it. Then your effort makes sense. So your planning should now would be, I will definitely clear prelims according to our study. And then I will do the entire foundation of the optional. Whatever optional you have. And then, because of your plan, whatever is time remaining between prelims and mains, will go intense on this and you'll get ready for the mains. It is not the perfect method, but this is the best method. As students, if you come to us, I want advanced course also, I'll sell it to you. But my recommendation to the teacher is, don't do that. You'll only mess up the preparation, you'll impact attempts in the next year. That's the 24 recommendation. For those who are preparing for 25, for you, I'll say, do Geography Foundation right now with us. Do your GS along with Madam you are doing. Then, 
the advanced course and everything to join from next year's August September month. Because what happened is in three four months you consolidate your proper geography. You would have read all the books. The GS in command you have. When I start the advance in the August month or September next year, then you be with me. I'll take you through a process. And for you guys, for 25, 25 should be a definite like a year to qualify. When you give the preliminary... Those in 24 attempt, okay, uh, try your best. Try your best. If you want to qualify, be pragmatic, okay, be wise there and accordingly study. Is it okay, all of you? Any questions here? So, yes, uh, so I'm repeating. In geography, we have two stages here. And I explained why you need two stages. And the timing is important. When you must start off with what stage? A any questions you want to clarify? Offline, online? Any questions you want me to ask? You want me to clarify, answer? Fine. So I think if you have, you can let me know eventually. Okay. So I've explained this to you. So winding up the conversation, I, my suggestion is don't look for the easy way out. Easy way out is fooling yourself. Easy way out is uh, conning yourself. There's a process to it. The scientific method to it, and people who qualify, they're capable of they're doing that. And, and you know, one of my uh, students told that to me, and I appreciate that. I'm sharing with all of you. In a class, there are two type of students. One who we call as rankers. They'll work hard, different way, and they will clear it. The other group of students who we call as bankers. They are for making, helping me make money. You decide where you want to be. Every ecosystem runs like that. As teachers, my job is to convert you into a ranker. But to do that, use your mind, your understanding. Don't be a blind, blind student. The one thing I repeat in the class every time. That we want thinking students. Aspirants who can think, understand the process. So all of this is to help you understand the process. Take a leap and done. So no easy way out. Be rational. You think, you choose and hang on. There is no shortcut. There is a process you can't bypass that. There is a method to it. Do it properly, you will qualify first, maximum second attempt maybe. And uh, my, my recommendation to all of you will be, when you enter the UPSC preparation, be willing. Give two, three years of your life. It takes time. Because, partly because our school systems are not really up there in terms of UPSC demands. I mean, the reason, uh, our IT entrance is at another level. But schools are not there. That's why we need a gap preparing called as your coaching institutes. The reality is the level is high. Type of uh, mathematics you are taught, or uh, reasoning you are taught. CAT examination another level, no? The reality, don't crib about it. UPSC in some ways, the mother of all examinations. The requirement is really very high. And I have seen people qualify, people coming from very regular backgrounds. In fact, the toppers sometimes qualify. Because it requires a persistence. It requires commitment there. Be willing to give years of life. And it's never a waste. Trust me. I have no... Well, begging on the streets. Today, UPSC career is giving a lot of money also in terms of salary. Crazy money. Okay, the starting salaries in institutes can be as high as 1 lakh, 2 lakhs, 3 lakhs also. If I give one interview... Okay, in, in uh, Delhi, it's a crazy salary you get. And I'm happy, why? Because it attracts good talent then. So don't be scared about, okay, um, if I don't qualify, what? Okay, life will give you a chance, but do it properly. One, number two, be 
cognizant of fact that this is a very long process. In a long process, you have to get three things right. Your approach has to be right. You have to have realistic timelines for yourself. And third, the support system must be right. It's like, you know, if there is a small half degree difference here, by the time I'm launching my rocket, I'll end up in Mars. Okay. Small distance, a small error I can rectify. But long distance, may a small error here can take you somewhere else. UPSC is that long distance marathon. That's why we, I, I, I use this uh, adage that when you're running very, very fast and very, very um, you know, sincerely, make sure you're running in the right direction. But if a direction is wrong, you'll end up at wrong place faster. So get your process right. Get your timelines right. And make sure you have people and support systems. One small mistake here. Okay, you'll end up messing up your entire uh, your preparation. Not that your life will get become bad, but the preparation will be destroyed. And UPSC, it's difficult to come back and start again. Because it's a tedious thing. It's so always nice to start in the right way from day one itself. Course cut whenever possible. That's one recommendation to all of you. And third, spend time at studying the previous questions. Okay, uh, studying uh, uh, from the right sources. I'm a big fan of studying from the books. Okay, because notes alone will never suffice. Keep this in mind and you're on. Now, one last conversation before I wind up. It's almost time. Okay. Uh, there are issues about uh, how to teach. When I was invited, there, I've been very excited. Like I said, it's a new geography. Uh, I'm exploring whether I can teach beyond Delhi or not. So when Shankar Ayes reached out and Madam reached out, more than happy there. But the problem is, I cannot be physically present here to teach you. It's not possible. So what we are thinking is a type of a hybrid model where you must study live. I am not a great fan of recordings every time. Recordings if it doesn't work out. Otherwise, it be part of live classes. So I think we are thinking on the screen teaching and live interactions. You can ask your doubts to me. I'll clarify about the line itself. And I'll come down with me and my team. We are three teachers. I take almost 70% of the classes. And then we have got two other teachers. The Dimple Madam is there. The Poof Sir is there. And something else also supported by the mentors. We'll come down here a couple of days in a month and put your process okay, properly. Uh, if you're willing to study uh, with me, uh, with our team, with the collaboration, we are more than happy to be there. It is uh, an exciting thing for us. But this was a limitation. It's impossible for me to come here and teach you every day. I would love to do that, but I think technology has ensured that we can do otherwise also. That's one. And the second problem is the timing thing, I'm told. You have got uh, classes. So geography classes are at 12 o'clock to till 2, 2 to 30. And I keep the second half for the enrichment sessions. It's not that the same slot will have the enrichment classes or advanced classes. So, uh, we run uh, two sessions. The two sessions uh, uh, will run concurrently if you join them together. Otherwise, you can do foundation right now and join the advance later on. And those who have done the foundation already, then the, you should join okay, the advanced course immediately. We're starting off, I think, September end, October will start the advanced course. But for that, I need your foundation must be strong. Okay, so That's uh, two realities we must confront with. Having said, uh, talk to the institute. You can reach out to us also. Whatever queries you have, you can ask us. We'll try to clarify that. And uh, my wishes to all of you, irrespective of where you study, what you study, study well, give it a best shot. We are in very exciting times where for India, suddenly a lot of prospects have opened up. Okay, We definitely want to become the best country. We should be there in some way or the other. And you can be part of that nation building. Okay, so exciting time. We invest time into it. And I'm sure life will come out eventually much better. 
That's from my side. Unless you have some questions to ask me. Okay, online students, I'm not interacted with you as much right now. If you have some questions, ask me, I will answer. Okay, so thanks from my side. I'll wait for your queries if you have any. Yeah. I hope I did not, uh, I was not a drag on you guys. Okay. Um, we sat through, uh, we started around what, uh, 3 40, 45 maybe, and it's now 5 10 by my watch. So, one and a half hours approximate. There's no question there, sir. When, when does the uh, when does the foundation go start? Okay. So, what we do in my institute is we run a relay race. Okay. So, we take admissions every second month. So, right now, uh, it's like you know, topic A, B, C, D, E topic. We can start from A and finish till Z. We can start from B, the A will come end me. We can start from F, the F, uh, A, B, C, D will be done later on. So, uh, in our institute, we are starting from Monday. No, from Tuesday rather. Uh, we are starting off with climatology. So, if you guys are okay, you can sit and join and see how it works out for you guys. So, foundation course starts from uh, and six months. Uh, wherever you start, uh, you, you will be given six months to finish off. Okay, so we're starting from uh, today is Sunday. Uh, we'll have one session tomorrow, orientation, and then we'll have the proper class from Tuesday, uh, 12 or 2 o'clock. Anybody else? The next entry point will be, I think, but after next, you have no chance for 24 attempt. It's already very tight. Okay, the next admission will be provided in the month of October or November, maybe, when I start off with your population geography. There are three entry points that we have in geography. Anything else? Any questions? No, all very quiet. Don't interact. I could see some of you smiling, but in general, you are very serious, serious. I'm not a serious man. I, I always say we don't want serious students. We want sincere students. Laugh, have fun, enjoy the process. Okay, and be sincere in terms of the commitments. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Any questions? Sir, suppose 2024 under coming clinics design both courses, GS Foundation and uh, uh, Advanced courses. Suppose 2024 please is not there, then again we want to join an uh, enrichment program. We don't need to do this twice. Now, one is enough. One enough. Uh, but generally, I say you must revise the enrichment every second year. If you have got one year of gap or two years of gap, maybe 25 if you are joining, then you should join me again. Otherwise, do it once. You don't need to do it twice. Uh, when is your when is your attempt? 24. Then don't join advanced course right now. You can't handle it. It would be too much for you. Then you join the foundation. Do the you're doing GS course here, isn't it? Do the GS properly. Because see, four classes in a day is mad. It is not the right target at all. See, if you join, it's good for me, you know. I make money there. But that's not wise. So you join foundation course. And after prelims, the two and a half months we have, we'll do whatever it takes. Like it'll, it'll not be a perfect preparation, but good enough to qualify. It'll be touch and go. Okay. But don't join advanced now with GS going on parallelly. You can't handle it. It'll be too much for you. We want you to be alive. No, we don't want you okay, dead in the month of January. Okay. My recommendation is don't do that. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Sir, what if, we, uh, if I already done the, the optional foundation and after that I am currently doing the CS uh, courses? Can then you can join. Finish? Yes. Uh, in one day, two classes is okay. So, enrichment will start from September and October. Absolutely. But make sure your foundation concepts are very strong. All the revision is done. Okay. Command is there on that. Because I will not teach foundation anymore. I will take you next level entirely. Then you, you, then you must join. If you're planning for 24, you can join. Anybody else? Ladies, don't ask here. Okay, ladies are all over. Right? Isro is all real ladies. Boys, you have got tough race. Okay, rank also of first four, five, six ranks. The girls are taking it. Okay, so oh, I can see a clear difference. There's one lady who is decided here. Otherwise, okay, is, is it deliberate or it is uh, uh, fortuitous? Girls on one side, boys on other side. No. Okay, not deliberate. It happens. It's called instinct. Okay. I know it's a bit stronger South India. I know that. Because I remember when I was in Chennai, I was in a bus. 
and the bus was empty types okay and i was tired i went and sat on the lady seat and i was stared at so badly by so many people i got down next stop itself i said probably i will get lynched by the time i reach then i realized oh the lines are very very strong here okay so i'm alive <laughs> any questions ladies nothing either i was too good or you guys are too smart ones and everything you have got no doubts online any questions there is one one question there what was that schedule of the course so what do you want exactly schedule you want the day wise so we have that you can check up our uh, website and i maybe i'll share with dashankar is academy also i'll give the schedule to you no, no worries okay i can't mention right now but we have a schedule uh, fee structure bad question to ask me okay so fee structure is next department i am the teacher i'll come and teach you okay so that's the next question we'll handle afterwards anybody else yes tell me yes yes live courses are also recording yes but my suggestion is if recordings you are doing then do it same day okay i don't keep it afterward and if possible be in the live sessions whenever possible is a different experience altogether with the doubts can be clarified but you'll get recordings also yes so so uh, if you are online students uh, we'll give you for the entire duration of the course but if the students are offline with us we give them recordings only for 3 days because my belief is uh, recordings um, uh, if you uh, keep it eternally it's like you know you will keep on uh, ignoring and doing it afterwards it never happens then so if our students if you are there okay like in delhi then you get only 3 days recording online which you will be most of you live will give you for the entire groups anything else all good nice so we are done my ajay sir uh, anything else uh, you can let me know okay so my pleasure being here have a lovely preparation my wishes to you and uh, god bless all of you thank you bye thank you so much